How about a New Testament word? Oh, yes, sir. Absolutely. Hi guys. So I want us to think of a real word that for some reason it's just knocking on my heart's door. Assurance. I didn't say insurance. Assurance. Can we all say assurance? One, two, three. Assurance. Wow. About one thirty y'all are listening. You ready? Assurance. Assurance. Like Dora? Dora the Explorer? I used to watch that all the time with my daughter. Can you say assurance? <laughs> Only someone with kids would, would actually like that. Diego, there was his name. Diego's like, bam, bam, he can do anything. Well, how about if you do me another favor? Cut your phones off, at least the ringers. Thank you. Before we get started, I got something on my heart I got to bring up. You ready? I got to do it standing up. Oh. How about them fancy shorts? Y'all like them? So, uh, in this church, position is not real important to us. I think that's why this is a bit of a successful church. And so, uh, I have no calling and I have no want to be anything more than what I am today. So, I say that. I get asked to do particular things sometimes in front of the church, for the church, or other folks. Okay? Okay. And if anybody really knows me, what's my one, possibly a quality, possibly not, what, what, what is my true feelings about things? I'm extremely Passion. emotional, passionate. Thank you, thank you. Passionate. And I am a, 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 an, an emotional man. I think I'm more emotional since the shooting, and probably most people would agree with that. But it didn't, doesn't mean I wasn't an emotional man then. Uh, Pinch, pinch her so she can make more noise. Uh, you, you know I, I, I like that, right? That said, so y'all remember I did a funeral for a lady that used to be, uh, belong to the church years ago. That following week I get a phone call from a man. I work, his brother worked for me for 18 years and I had to do a funeral. I just spoke to Frank about this just now. And, and while I'm in front of this camera now, let me just say this. So, you take away the shooting in my life. And, and, and I really have never lost someone so close that I hurt. You know, it doesn't mean I'm cold. It just means that, uh, now, I, I lost my mother when I was six months old. Hey, I was six months old, right? So I can't, can't go off of that. But my dad's been with us all, our, all, all his life. My grandmother was, I was a full-grown man when my grandmother passed away. And of course I hurt over that. But, so I lose this friend of mine, right? And, and, and uh, uh, I, I think you could kind of call me a family minister sometimes. 
cetera. Job titles aren't important, but, but what I do, I think, is more important. And so as I, how did that thing work? John's in the now. He's following me. And, and, and so what I, where I'm going with this is this. You know, uh, some words from a funeral I did recently was, uh, uh, Frank actually helped me with some pastoral notes that he had and he kept, and I, I snatched a few of them and used a few of them. That's what God's words for, of course. But it, why was this for all men are appointed to die? That would include women too, by the way. But the Bible uses men as an example. And, and with that said, I, I want you all to understand something. We're all going to die. Did I just tell you something you didn't know? Of course not. We all know we're going to die. The question is when. And what particular happening. And, and so, even though we lost 26 friends three years ago and 14 days, whatever it is. <coughs> even though we lost those, those, those people, some folks uh, hurt longer and more. Right? Because somebody's been taken out of their life. We have some legs to stand on by saying that uh, our Christian brothers and sisters, their next breath is in heaven <coughs> with Jesus himself. And all, all the former loved ones that have passed before. So that's an amen too, right? But still, we're here on earth hurting. And so when I tell you something like this, it is strictly and straight from my heart. So here's, here's my friend. After 18 years of working for me, I've known him probably 27 or 28 years, my age. So I guess I'm middle-aged to older nowadays. But uh, he dies. I walk in the parking lot. I meet his brother. His brother that I already knew, his twin brother. His brother called me to do the funeral. I meet his other brother. I meet some of his sisters, aunts, uncles, everybody, right? No big deal. That's, that's what that's the life's about. We go meet people at funerals and get together and stuff, and hopefully we can rekindle relationships. I hope that was the message that I preached that night, as a matter of fact. And, and in general, uh, we, can, we can reach out to our brothers and sisters, and those that aren't brothers and sisters in Christ, we can reach out to them. Okay, that's the formality. Here's the facts. The facts are that I get a phone call this week from that same brother that his younger brother <coughs> died. Could I do the funeral? And you know, this hit me like a ton of bricks. It hit me because, again, we're all going to die. I understand the scripture. I can, I can pull some of the Ecclesiastes. There's a time to, I love, there's a time to mourn, and then there's a time to dance in the same sentence, huh? Have y'all read that? A time to mourn. As soon as your mourning's over, let's go dance. In other words, let's go celebrate. Life, we still have. And I just want y'all to know this. We don't know that appointed day. And if, if there's anybody... Let's just assume everyone here claims they know Christ. Amen. That's 100%. Probability is pretty closer that it's not true than it being 100%. Let's just say it is. Your brother, your sister, your friend, your neighbor, your former co-worker, whoever it may be that doesn't know Christ today. Now, I'm starting this off the first 10 minutes to go into our prayer like we normally do. I'm over here. You know, it's actually a plea for me because we don't know when that time is appointed. Two girls died two weeks ago here in Laverne. Young baby girls, 15 or 17. If I got the, date, the years right, I think it is. Little girls. They're not grown. You know, they may look like women, but they're babes. They're just babes. Frank's going to do a funeral Saturday. Most everybody knew. Uh, one of the best guitar playing men you'll ever hear. Bill. And, and his time was appointed because I don't know the answer. And I'm just trying to say, death is going to knock on the door. And is it going to knock on the door and you know Christ? Or is it going to knock on the door and you thought you knew Christ as our as our lessons talk about still being still being on milk and not really ready for any real meat that the Bible has to offer us through the Holy Spirit. So, please understand my plea then with you. Those that you know that don't know Jesus, be a pain in the rear to them. Go introduce them. And better yet, live like you know Jesus. Love like you know Jesus. Because you just don't know we expect old people to die. You know, it's just a fact. Because we live and we die. And, and, and the scripture has been said many times. Life is but a mist. It's a cloud. It's a vapor. And, and the example 
as you look up at the sky today, and that cloud could be there all day. So was there a day. But in the, in the big scheme of things of life and time, it's nothing. It's just, it just evaporates away. That's our 60, 70, 75 years that we're allowed. So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking to you from my heart that I hope you know Jesus. My prayer is that you know and you have that relationship with Jesus. And if that's true, go and give it to the world. One person at a time. Thank you. I appreciate that time. You know where a prayer list is? I'm going to, Frank, start us off with a prayer for, for Miss Janie a while ago, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll start us off on a word of prayer to get started here. Father in heaven, first of all, I want to thank you for this young little girl. Lord, I pray that she is loud. I pray her lungs just, just speak out, and I pray she stays in God's house all her life. And I, and I pray that one day she'll look back and say that I was allowed to play in the worship room and the prayer room, and people loved me anyway. Father, uh, thank you for these blessings of these babies. Lord, I do lift up Jamie also, Lord, or Jan Janie also, Lord. And I, and I pray whatever her ailments are, Lord, that those doctors, nurses, techs, all those folks that are involved, that you'll put your hand on them and open their mind up and open up their, their, their learning thinking and give them the answers that they're looking for to help take care of her and fix these problems. I've had a few texts from her. I've prayed for her. So I, I want to continue to do that right now. Lord, help us get going on this, on this uh, prayer list. And as it leads into our, our he Hebrew study, then I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Apologize if I'm a little stuttery here. Uh, I'm telling you, this stuff about death is so real. So real. So, as you know, I, I remind you every week, this is a shared job. Not David's job. So, who will start us off with a... There you go. That is so good. No begging or nothing. Thank you, ma'am. Miss Jennifer is going to read for us. Ma'am, read the first list and about halfway to the second one. Lacey Simmons, Michael McCroft, Jessica Williams, Daniel Hewitt, Gary Tovar, Jason Castillo, Gage West, Mary Thomas, Daniel Walker, Richard Thibodeau, Joshua Stilwell, Brandy Smith, Andrew Kinsey, Colton Lucina, Jessica Vincent, Morgan Colbach, Russell Tabor, Anthony Davis, Veronica Griffin, Charlene Cummins, Samuel Simmons, Alyssa Peterson, J.C. Castillo, Rick Simmons, Robert Fernandez, Ryan Spring, Mark Nolan, Michael Wiley, Matt Dixon, Robert Mason, and Carson Carter. All right. How about somebody pick up from that list? Wayne? Carson Carter? Okay, so the first thing I want to ask, is there any updates on those existing on that list? Yes, ma'am.
There you go. That's kind of what I was talking about a while ago. You know, if you got yourself right and you say you're right, are you ready to step out and knock on someone's door? Or in this case, knock on someone's window. Amen. Oh, absolutely. And that little stuff in your system that shakes and makes you quiver and makes your voice. And some of us men maybe shed a tear before we can get out. Do you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Once you said it, man, you got power. It just... It's just, it's, it's, it's not the Holy Spirit holding you back. It's your flesh holding you back. And I know that. Uh, as much as I'm willing to talk, I, I still have just a little bit of, of, of hold myself back before I'm finally re ready to say it. And once it's out, boy, we're just, hey, what can he say? Get lost? That's it. Um, anybody else we can update on the list? I'll, I'll make sure I remember you. Okay. How about adding to this list? On, on, excuse me. On, on, my, on my part here, I'd like to continue to keep my son Morgan on this list. Please. And I think that's the only one that I have any, uh, any knowledge about. I would also like to keep Michael McCrawl on the, on the list. And he's up second one on the list. So, and, uh, yeah, and Jessica Williams. Jessica. I mean, Vincent, I'm sorry. I Right underneath McCall. Jessica Vincent, yes. Under Colton Lacina. Okay, Miss Charlene? Keep Russell and I on the list. Okay, going to keep Russell Haber on the list. All right. Anybody we can add to the list? Yes, ma'am? My grandfather and grandmother What was your last name on him? B I think she's saying Bingham. Bingham, yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay. All right, and that's that's the extent of this list. You know, one thing I didn't mention for some reason or another, thank you to the first responders. Continue to pray for the first responders. I didn't mention that. And pray uh, our, our church that we had on there for a long time is not on there, but we should know it by heart, Sagatalk Church. And I might also say all churches are being are being asked to close down right now in many, many states. Please keep them in your prayers. Uh, and I really mean this. I pray for pastors that will stand up. You know, I'm not saying they have to go to jail, but that might be where they go. But I ask them to stand up for God's word first. If those churches are taking the precautions that their governors are saying, that should be good enough. We got people going to air, airplanes and buses and, and rallies and parties and Governor Newsom himself and, you know, all these hypocrites, they can say like they want to say, you do what I say to do instead of let's all do the same thing. Don't get me into that, Frank. No. Okay. Can someone lift up this list in prayer? Okay, I'll, I'll call on you. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, young lady. All right, um, Karen, we're going to have this list, and don't forget, okay? Because I'm lucky to remember that much. Okay, on our cancer battlers, can someone read the first one and a half columns? Go right ahead, Miss Melissa. Okay, Sharon Starks, Oki Garland, Morris Budge, Brad Wynn, Ryan Fields, Jeff Hall, Jeff I think it's Lamia. Lamia.
that'll do it. Okay, now someone pick up from Sausage Jarrell. Anybody? Anybody? If you could get your name called, don't don't look don't look at me. Don't give me no eye contact. Go ahead, Jeff, please. We're going to call on you again. You got a great voice. <laughs> All right. Is there anybody that we can uh, uh, get any information off this list? Any check on anybody here with cancer on the list? Okay, ho hold on, sir. Ho uh, hold on, sir. Uh, Brother Warren, Brother Kobath, go right ahead. What color are you going to wear, Pastor Warren, Sunday? Uh, you know, I don't wear protection. All right. I got five new colors. I got five new colors. I'm going to have the right color. Wait, hold on. What's your list, sir? Get that update? No, oh. Sorry. Sorry. I you were done. Oh, oh, no, I said you get his update. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, Charlene. She jumped on me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I, I have a, uh, I thought it was for this list. It's for the next one. Someone text me, two people, and I guess both of them would be on the, I guess both of them would be on the last list, ma'am. I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, Karen, didn't you? We're holding the party up just for you. Holtz, Joy Holtz. Okay. Mr. Kelly, it's good to see you here. Hi. <laughs> Nobody's beyond my, my, my hollering out to him. Is there anybody else we can add to this list? No updates and, and just these couple of ads we've got, right? All right. I will ask Pastor Warren on this list here if he'd lift them up, please.
you know, a while ago, I had, I had a note I wanted to say to y'all, and I copied it from, um, it might have been uh, Warren on, on radio this morning. Lord, I'll do anything you say. Lay the plan out for me and show me I trust you. And I would mentioned a while ago about we don't know about tomorrow. And, and if you're in Frank's Sunday morning class, we're in the book of James. And it used to be my absolute, without a doubt, favorite book because it's probably the first one I ever read and studied on. And it still is a great book. But it says, remember James says, you're planning for tomorrow. You don't even know what tomorrow brings. And I say this pandemic shows that what the Lord needs is real. And these, these pandemics are real. These deaths are real. And I just wanted to bring that back up. The back side of our prayer list. Let's pray for our family, friends, and community. Sherry, can you read that list? Rachel, Paul, Ken. Oh, the back side? Is your list Michael first? Michael Robson? Yes. yes. Hey, baby. What we add to that list, is there anybody on here that we can, uh, ha we have any information on? Update them? Yes, Ms. Charlene. Any other updates? Hold on, Miss. Hold, hold on, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Was that wiping her energy away? Is that one of the things she's doing? She's really. Wow. Well. Yeah. Hold, hold on. When was that surgery? Do you know? No. no? It's Tuesday. She goes and sees the surgeon. What what is your name back there? In the purple? Ellen. <laughs> Come on, Miss Beasenbach, what you got for us? Any other updates on anybody? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And 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 with you saying that, just so I don't forget, uh, golf, uh, Paul, golf, uh, wants to be.
put on this side of the list, he had a, a, a seizure and was rushed to the hospital. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that right, Michelle? He wasn't rushed to the hospital. Oh. Not a protocol. Yeah, he went to the ER last night. Okay. He's fine. Yeah. Miss Melissa? I'd like to add Barbara. What's Barbara's last name? Brooke. Huh? Brooks? Brooks. Barbara Brooks to the spiritual guidance list. Sorry, I was slacking on that one. Nah, not a problem. And so, so whatever needs she needs has to be met. Okay. John, oh, you, you want to say it? Okay, thank you, John. Hey, it was next on my list, John. <laughs> you didn't trust me. <laughs> thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, ma'am. Sharon Davis, second photo model. Uh, they found a spot on her, um, and they think it's possibly lung cancer. So. That's Terry Davis. And, and just for a couple of weeks, I'd like to put the Ortiz family on there. This is the family that my friend belongs to, and he, he, he died a couple of weeks ago, and now his other brother died this week. So they're probably going through some pretty tough times right now. So like, just lift them up in prayer. I guess, I don't know if that would go on spiritual side or just in general prayers. Everybody check your phones. Anybody else ask you to put a prayer, someone on the prayer list? Hold on, Miss Biesenbach. You already had your turn. <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Powers, you have the floor. Who do you want to take off the list, Ms. Biesenbach? You just said you're taking off. That's like being deceptive. I'm sorry? I've almost given up on hearing. I can't even hear David. And, and we don't talk about COVID a lot here, it seems. So sorry about that. But uh, Pastor Butch at the Country Church in Marion uh, is recovering well. I talked to him today from, from COVID. So, yes, ma'am, Miss Charlene. The Billy Little family. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Wayne. And you said something about she suffers from some she, she has respiratory asthma. Uh, asthma.
Okay. I'm not in a hurry. Anybody else? What's her last name? Wayne, what's her last name? Needs. Oh, it is Needs. Again? <laughs> what do you got? unspoken she's taking a test we want her to pass it <laughs> she she wants to pass it okay. yeah. Pastor, can you talk to him about what unspoken means <laughs> probably what you'll t- teach him for the next couple days <laughs> all right tell you what um i'll i'll start this part off and uh I'll, I'll finish this part with a word of prayer and you know what thank you for the smiles and the laughter we're dealing with some heavy things right now, lots of things going on there, so I think that's great. All right, Father in heaven, again, Lord, we come to you, Lord, and we lift up each and every one of these folks on, our, on the back side of our prayer list, Lord. It's our friends, our family, our community, our close loved ones, the ones that we deal with daily. Lord, so we lift these folks up to you. We pray for healings. I don't know what your will is, but I know every time something happens, we're to learn something from that, whether it's sickness, whether it's, Uh, any kind of happening in our life, Lord, uh, physical or spiritual. So I I pray for us that aren't hurt that we can learn from what is going on with these that are in those situations. I pray we can continue to look to you for guidance. I pray we can continue to call on you and bring that joy into our hearts, even in the midst of times that are so hurtful and sad and things around us seem to be falling apart. But you are our rock, our cornerstone. Lord, those aren't sayings. Those are facts. The, the spiritual gifts that you've been giving us were built on that cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Lord, so I pray for every one of these folks on this list. Cancer battlers, Lord, it's tragic. We hear people passing from, these, from, from not having cures or from their body just being so ravaged from it, Lord. So we lift up each one and every one of these uh, cancer battlers. We pray for all spiritual guidance. Lord, the Bible says that our, we're warring with... Uh, is, is not with flesh and blood, but it's with the principalities in the heavenly places, Lord. So, Father, you know what these, what these spiritual war that, that war within us and around us and, and, and through and by us, Lord. So, Father, I do lift each and every one of us up that are going through those things and each one of these folks that are going through those. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for this church and the body in this church and the love out of this church. So, Lord, if there was no love, we wouldn't worry about this prayer list. So we thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Did I talk about the funeral for Bill Fiddler? I, I did not. I thought everybody knew it. It was on the, pro, on the, on the uh, handout Sunday. There, we're having a funeral for Bill Fiddler, our, our guitar player. I mentioned a while ago, our former guitar player. And he's um, um, uh, Kevin's. Helen's, uh, Helen Fiddler's husband, it was, okay, (laughs) Helen Fiddler's husband's funeral will be this Sunday, I mean this Saturday at four o'clock here at this church, so we invite you to come, and there is a dish to be brought or something, right? And so I won't do a remote. I'm not going to do a remote, but the church will be open almost all day, okay? On, th- on Thanksgiving Day. Yes, ma'am. Is this something that people bring dishes to? Yes, but, but you don't have to. That lady back there is going to cook a meal. It'll be a feast. But you don't have to bring Yeah, don't let that hold you back. You're running late. You're passing by. Come on in. We've done it. For, they, this church has done it for years and years. Where are your family? Yeah. Tell my wife. Come to our house. We're going to sneak over here for a little while. 
Yes, ma'am. I went back and looked at all the, the studies that you did and how much overtime you did. And you owe me a lot of time. No, you owe me a lot. So I think we should just close and fail and go. Woo, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> you know why that's not going to happen? Because However, we... Prayer time should take priority all the time. Oh, absolutely. I, I say that every week. This is a bonus I get to do after prayer. So, if, if everybody goes to their Bibles that I know you brought and go back to Hebrews 5, and we're just going to touch, we're just going to touch on something in verse... Eleven. Uh, but as I say that, I just want to touch on verse eight. We're going to start reading in verse eleven. I want to make sure that we understood something in verse eight. In verse eight, it says, um, "I got all this writing in my Bible. It's hard to pick out the verses." Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Okay, explaining that. The other day, and it's just a short note I want to give you. Jesus did not need to learn to obey as if disobedient previously. But he did have to go through the experience of obeying his Father's will. I wish I could have put that together in those simple terms last, last week. But he learned the nature of obedience. In Philippians, in Philippians 2.8, it says, And being found in appearance a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. And as easy as that sounded a while ago, last week my mind was just going 15 different directions and I could not even put that closely to resembling that, except the obedience had nothing to do with him being disobedient. Amen. I think you did do it. Oh, well, it, it, kind, of, it kind of was harping on my mind that if I, didn't, if I didn't put that in the right terms... So I said, let's go to verse 11. Because do you all remember what, what 11 said? Yes, and that was nice of you singing that. <laughs> I, I, spent a, I spent a decent amount of time last week, and, and I actually felt like, if you all don't know, I watch and go back over what I, what I talk about. Frank says he doesn't do it. I do because I want to see where I catch myself in saying something that wasn't right. And I, I expounded quite a bit on that. And I wasn't necessarily trying to step on people's toes. And I did say if the Holy Spirit steps on your toes because we're dull of hearing, that dull of hearing has nothing to do with our actually our, our, our orifices in our ears and our, and our membranes in our ears and, our, and, and everything that makes our, us hear the word. But it's the actual fact of acting on God's word. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Uh, that's called the Christian Bible? Christian Standard. Yeah, Christian Standard Bible. That's exactly right. Did you hear what Kelly said? It's like a dull knife. You haven't sharpened it. All right. You know, that reminds me of a story that, that uh, just, I actually have a mind sometimes. It reminds me of a story that Adrian Rogers said, and y'all have heard this story, that this guy goes out and gets a job chopping wood. And the first day, he, he chops a truckload of wood. And the second day, about a half a truck. Third day, guy that is do you're doing the work for us. Man, this guy's just slowing down. But he goes out there and watches. He's working so hard. And, of course, what was going on there? He never sharpened his axe. And the, the gist of the story is you can't say you know God's word without brushing up and reading on it on a regular basis and then applying it. All right. Amen. In John 16, verse 12, I know we're in Hebrews. In John 16, verse 12, in reference to verse 11 of Hebrews, says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. Now, when, when that was written, he, John was actually writing for who? Jesus. And does Peter come after? Yes, it does. So if we go over here to 2 Peter chapter 3. Oh, I wanted to say something to Stormy. Stormy had a scripture reading one day, and he says, and why is it that all these good verses come from chapter 3, verse 16, and all these different books? Well, I, I was writing this down, and I go, man, Stormy's right, again. It says in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16, 
as also in all his epistles, Peter's actually talking about Paul, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable, unstable people twist in their own destruction as they do also the rest of scriptures. What is that verse telling us? Well, we're going to jump into something about who should be teachers maybe, but it's telling us that you heard something on the radio, before you go preach it, you better look it up. You, you watch something on t of, of some evangelist uh, on the TV, well, don't let it sink in too deep just yet. <laughs> if you haven't heard Stormy say that before, he's heard enough pastors or evangelists talk about in the original Greek. Well, you know what? Go find out what the original Greek has to say. There's plenty of help, but you can't take it. And you know what? Y'all have come to trust me, I'll bet you, right? Great. Don't. Read the words. That's why I call verses out. That's why I ask you. Check this out. When Frank's up there, you know what my wife's doing? She's writing verses and stuff now. She's going to go home and check that stuff. Now, I'm not. But she does do that. And it's not a trust issue, actually. I shouldn't have said that. It, it, it's really just to verify and what? Uh, familiarize yourself with the scripture. So, yes, sir. Good practice. And, and planting. Absolutely. Can, can I have permission to run to 8.30 today? No. <laughs> except, except, except from her. You have teachers back there. And we love them. Verse 12. Okay, here we go. Verse 12. We just got through with, we have much to say, but you're just not ready. Now he's going to give you an explanation of not being ready. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. Now he's not necessarily saying you need to be teachers and you should be teachers. He's saying you should have enough knowledge. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something. How many years did we say Paul stayed in that Tyrannus, whatever it's called, what's it called? Where he spoke in, in Ephesus? Ty Tyrannus, the auditorium, he spoke for two years. So he's not just flippantly writing a letter while he's in prison saying, these guys should know this. You know what he's saying? He's saying, these guys should know this. I spent two years with them. I spent two real years. I'm an evangelist. I travel around, but I stayed here for two years because actually, you know what his words were? I saw this tremendous opportunity. So many people. When, when, I, when I read that and then I get my Bible dictionary and I get these other books out and I find out that there wasn't a few hundred thousand people in the Ephesus area. There was a couple of million people. There was lots of people. You know, it's, it's like a, a, a gambler walks into Vegas and his eyes, if you, could, if you could see through there, he's got dollar signs. Well, here's what, here's what Paul had. He had Jesus with sitting on the cross on his eyes. He could just see, I'm going to deliver this word to all these people. These folks, there's so many. Ha, I'm going to tell you right now, this is an opportunity, not for me, but for God's word to go out and spread out among them all. That's what it you want, sir? No, oh. It's like the majority of everybody come through there. <laughs> That's right. And, and I did spend a little bit of time. Oh, no. I, I'm doing Ephesians in my, in my, my men and women's Bible study now. It was, it was a thoroughfare for people going from different areas. That was like the hub. It was such a hub and such a beautiful place on the Mediterranean that it says that the emperors from, from Rome would visit there through the years. At this time, just the sweet fellow by the name of Nero would visit. Okay? He just liked fire and hurting Christians. But he would come visit the people in, uh, in Ephesus because of the climate and the, and the exchange and, and everything that was available there. It's a great vacation spot. So I come back to, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, comma, 
I, I, I'll come back. You need someone to teach you again the first principle, principles of the oracles of God. All right. So the author has so much more to say about Jesus and his priesthood. That's where we were at in the first place in, in uh, the end of four and getting into five about the order where Jesus is at in the order of the priesthood of Melchizedek, right? All right. So he says, it's hard to get this point across because they're hard hearted people, dull in hearing, sluggish in hearing. I told you a while ago that, that um, in John 16, 12, Jesus said, so it was a common occurrence. Frank would probably say this sometimes after 18 or 19 years. Man, there's some people pretty dull of hearing out here. Okay? Now, he wouldn't stand up here and say that, but I got no problem saying it. Of course there is. <laughs> he is saying we are all called to teach. We are not all called to teach, but we should know enough and have enough wisdom to help others learn what has God has done and done for him and them. Now, where would they get the wisdom? We didn't have a New Testament Bible yet, but they'd get the wisdom from the teaching Paul left. What did Paul leave? Paul shows up for two years on his third missionary journey, stays there for two full years. And what does he do? He teaches. He assigns bishops and elders and deacons and overseers. See, he didn't just show up and say a few words and he's out of there. He built... The, he helped through the Holy Spirit build the church of Ephesus. So he knows the foundation he left behind. Now he's getting word back that there's some falling away. You know where they're falling? They're falling back to the to the to the Ju the the, Ju the Judaisms. The Jews are falling back to Judaism. They're going back to the Mosaic rules and the, and the Mosaic laws. Well, that's that group. What about the Gentiles? See, now they're all one group. There are no differences in Jew and Greek. They're all one. Uh, Jew and Gentile. They're all one now. But instead, because bad influences come in the church, and where is the church there? It could be in someone's house. It could be a two-man, four-man, ten-man outfit. Why? Because you're growing your thinking when you have these outside influences. And those outside influences have got to be checked and rechecked before you just absorb them and take them in as fact. Sir? It say it again. Oh, What'd she say? Oh. Oh. Using the media as an example, it's a perfect example. But and if, if we stayed in Christian circles, you know, I, I, I saw a special the other day on Mr. Smiles, preacher himself, and... And, he, and if you just listen to him, what a sweet guy. But, you know, that doesn't mean that sweet guy is going to heaven. Because if he doesn't make the claim that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, that he was born of the Virgin Mary, that he lived on this earth for 33 days as a God-man. What did I say? <laughs> well, he was there 33 days, but also 33 years. Sorry about that. Hey, you're, you're not so dull of hearing. Oh, that's pretty cool. But we've got to call on Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That foundation cannot be rocked, moved, changed, altered, slighted, or nothing. And if anybody slights it, you know what slights it means? Cuts into it and claims something differently? Walk away, baby. Walk away. Because that's not the God that we worship. We, have, we, we worship the unmovable, complete, complete. The word complete is just that. He is everything of everything of anything. That's our God. Unmovable, unshakable. That's our foundation. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to emphasize this because that's kind of what Paul's saying. I left you a foundation. I left you everything you need to know. Don't deviate from it. There's going to be some unhinged people coming in your church that are going to try to do this. Don't let them. Be strong in the word. My gracious, what does Paul tell us in Ephesians 6? He tells us that we war against flesh and blood? No, against the spiritual forces in the heavenly places. That, the, I, I, I think I mentioned that in my prayer a while ago. 
That's because this is stuff that we can't control. So we control what we can control. We control what we can control. What can we control? We can control what we hear. We can control who we hang with. We can control where we go. And we can control what we learn. Learn God's word and don't let outside influences change God's word. Because God's word doesn't what? It doesn't change. Yes, ma'am, Miss Rose. <laughs> Go to First Corinthians. Chapter three. That's right. Man, I mean, that's a that's a teacher's message right there. Perfect. I'm kind of thinking maybe she ought. Yeah, she'll be up here. One, chapter three, one through three. Can you read it? We're done. Yeah. He's got two minutes. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unspiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, and whereas there is among you envy and in strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Okay. The King James uses the word carnal regularly. Even the New King James will use carnal and flesh. I don't know if the NIV uses. <laughs> but we are... He's saying, you're not ready. You're living in the flesh. Quick example. What is living in the flesh? Something happens, we react like a non-Christian. From temper to doing things that, that are just way out of bounds. I mean, make up your own story, whatever it may be. How should we react? And look, I'm guilty at times. I'm as carnal a man as anybody. I have, I'm one of these guys that's got to talk to God regular because I'll get carried away. Now, there's a lot of things that I've taken care of, and me and the Lord have good talks over it. There's a lot of things we're still working on. You guys should say the same thing. You should say the same thing. You can't look at yourself as perfect, but strive to be that perfect. The carnal man will put carnal ways first. The fleshly man will do the fleshly things in times of trouble. The fleshly man will do the fleshly things uh, when his heart desires, whatever it may be. But the man of God looks to God first. The man of God does not panic first. I can remember one time something drastic happened. I called Frank, and I, and I should have called on God first. And, 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 and Frank's so far from God, he's not God, I know that. But I called him, and, and he goes, hey, calm down. It's been years ago. Calm down. What's, what are you trying to say? And then, you know, because I'm not... I'm not thinking God first, God first. I'm, I'm still on the bottle, sucking a bottle of, of, of baby formula instead of what? Getting up ready for that big T-bone steak because whatever comes my way, what's going on? God's got this. You know, you can't change what just happened. What changes is how we deal with it. Yes, sir. Let me read this out of a different translation. Dear brother, I have been talking to you as though you were still just babies in the Christian life who are not following the Lord but your own desires. I cannot talk to you as I would to a healthy Christian who are filled with the Spirit. I have had to feed you with milk and not with solid food because you couldn't digest anything stronger. And now that you still have to be fed on milk, for you are still only baby Christians, controlled by your own desires and not God. When you are jealous of one another and divided up into quarreling groups, doesn't that prove that you're still babies wanting your own way? In fact, you're acting like people who don't belong to the Lord at all. Amen. Okay, okay. 
You that want to stay till 8.30, you may stay. Okay. Uh, I want to I assure you there are some things that happened this week that they didn't permit us to get very far. But if you think we're through with verse 12 and 13, think again. Be here next week because we are not through with 12 and 13. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and just to tell you, the Marks family is another family that's had a lot of death, a lot of tragedy. So we want to continue to lift them up. Matter of fact, I would normally forget names, but if I forget your name, it's fine. I would normally ask Frank, but I'd like to close this in a word of prayer. You, you want to close this in a word of prayer, Frank? I'm sorry. Would you like to? Well, if you want to I don't care. Go, go, go ahead, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a shared responsibility. And we should make I pray all the time. I'm good. Okay. Lord, I do come before you tonight to thank you for this opportunity we have. And God, I thank you that you don't hold a clock, that, that your time is all the time and we can always go to your word. We can always go to you in prayer. We can always go to you on our knees or standing, walking, sleeping. You're there. Never sleeping, always watchful. So God, I just pray that you'd watch over all these on this prayer list tonight. Watch over the words that have been shared here tonight. Though the study was brief, there was poignancy to it as well as we think about what it means to listen with dull ears, Lord God. You tell us to quicken our, that you will quicken our spirit if we will pay attention to who and what you are. So may we become sharper in your, in your word and in your spirit. So guide us, Lord. Direct our paths. Help us to remember to play, pray for the Monica and and her, or pray for her husband and her mom and her dad. Lord, just be with Debbie and Robert and just hold them special tight to you. Be, be with uh, Jamie as she is uh, looking at this surgery coming up and Bobby having the same surgery and Dawn going through her gallbladder being removed, Lord. So many different things happening all at the same time, but yet you're still on the throne. May we never forget that. And you did say, Lord, that it's appointed on the man once to die and then to face the judgment. We're all going to face that day. But in the meantime, may we be your light. May we be your shining sword. I pray that we will be your champions amongst the dark. And God, give us direction, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you leave, I would like to tell you that there was a pastor one day, years ago, that was in the third room balcony. And he put a guy to sleep after all his preaching. He fell down. And the guy runs down there and falls on him and gets the guy back up. Of course, the Holy Spirit raised him back up. And that was Paul. And the guy just fell out the window. He fell asleep. Now, that said, all right, that said, I can't wait for the day when someone says, we ain't got no timetable. Because I could probably put three or four hours pretty easily together. Just give me the opportunity. We, we will definitely have to have the Spirit of God to handle it. Have a good week, guys. Thank you all. Get on out of here. That's right.